Hey guys, this week's episode of The Higher Self, you know if you listen, I never do this. I'm going to challenge you with something. I want you to listen to this one from beginning to end. It's going to get thick. It's going to get a little a little tough on you. Um, but we're going to be talking about how to heal the body from any illness, right? And the reality is that in order to do that, there's some parts of you that you have to unravel and let go of. And I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a tough conversation but it is by far my favorite episode ever. Your life will be blessed by it. So let's get started on this week's episode of The Higher Self. Welcome to this week's episode. By the way, before I even get started, and you can include this, Casper, I'm glad you're here right now because I know you, you're cool, you're right, like my, right, you right. feel like my people, right, right, you know? Right, right, right. And um, I've been driving, I've been like full dad mode, so I've been driving the kids around at soccer camps and this and that. And I just broke my fast because I was exhausted. And I was telling Casper, I was like, I don't want to do this right now. Oh, really? Yeah. But you being here is like. The energy is here. Let's do this. Let's, Let's do this, this man. This so is how welcome to this week's right. episode of The Higher right. Self. Um, you know, I met this individual recently on a trip to Los Angeles. I think you're in for a treat. Um, uh, he is, uh, he's real. He's, he's down to earth. He's like, he's like one of us type of deal. He's got that vibe to him. But. Like most importantly, he's a doctor. He's a, and you're like a legitimate doctor, real, real doctor, no a real no, doctor, no like online course doctor. Yeah, or, yeah, no like you took a certification. Now you you your ego school needs and, you to call yourself doctor. No, and no. school and gray hair. Mom and made studying. you exactly no because that Books. would make her feel proud and accomplished in life. None exactly. of that shit. None of that shit. No? Okay, cool. All right, so welcome, Doctor G. Thank you, man. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I'm in Texas. I'm out here at your house, man. You know, when you came on the podcast, I was like. That's a that's my people. It's 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 the same powerful consciousness what we want to do in the yeah. world, and you know just the same energies there. And I was like, the moment you were like, come on the podcast, I was like, hell yeah, yeah man. And it's my first time in Austin too, so oh, I'm get vibing out of here. Yeah, I'm vibing with the trees, the people, the community. We have a mutual friend who never wears a shirt, Aaron. Aaron yeah. I, I was with him the other day, and guess what? He wasn't wearing a shirt. Oh yeah, yeah, he didn't yeah you know what I mean. Yeah. So, and I've been working out, but I kept my shirt on because <laughs> this guy looking like 300 Sparta, you know. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. But we're here. I'm glad you're here because I was telling you, um, Austin is just a vibe, man. It's yeah. just a, it's just a different vibe. How have you felt it here? I have felt nervous system good. Uh, yeah. Not the amount of stimulus that I'm used to. Right. People running around. I live in Venice, which is great creativity, uh, great artistry. A lot of homeless, and and there's a underlying just sense of I'm not. There's a underlying sense of I'm not safe. For sure. Right? For a sure. Even if you're walking the streets to go to the supermarket, it's like... For sure. LA, New York. Yeah. I think those are the two biggest ones. That's where I grew up, New York, and yeah, then I moved me to too. LA. So me too. we know, like, our nervous systems are already predisposed to that tension. Right, right. And and, and you know what? By the way, we're going to get into, like, doctor stuff in a little bit. Um, I've never started a podcast like this before. Really? It just feels like a, like a genuine, like... Oh, this is how we yeah, flow. This is cool conversation. Yeah. But, you know, when it comes to, like, L.A. and New York, for example, um, it, it's like the capital of, like, stress and, like, yeah. thicker... Yeah. You know, I'm just going to say, it, like, darker energy. Yeah. You know, not to say that they're not beautiful, they're mm -hmm. not fun, but what I see is when people come to Awaken here in Austin, for example, is that it's like they're... <sighs> yeah. And I was thinking about you. I was like, this is going to be good for you yeah. because there's that underlying thing in LA where you're right, where you, you're, you're, if you're walking around at nine o'clock at night, you have to be like, you got to be thinking, you walk around nine, 10, 11, midnight here in Austin, it's chill, bro. Yeah, it's, it's chill. chill. It's nice. And the nervous system feels it, man. I'm telling you that even if you've done all the meditations and breath work, whatever it is, you still feel it. There's For a, sure. there's, it, it, especially as a sensitive individual, I feel the collective, right? Ironically, it's that that you can like create and manifest something really fast because it's like there's so much at your fingertips. You want to be a blank entrepreneur? If I want to be a basket weaving entrepreneur, like I can have the biggest basket weaving online service and brick and mortar. Um, but there's something to be said about being in a space and a place that opens up within you that. I'm safe, I'm calm, nervous system is relaxed. Because for me, immediately I'm creative. I'm like, you know what, why don't I write a play? I should write a play. And then all of a sudden, blacking out and I write 10 pages really fast. And I was wow. like, perfect, you know? This is the gift of when we are able to be in nature and alone and with our nervous systems 
relaxed. Absolutely. And I, and I think, you know, so many, I get these messages all the time. So many people, you know, on, on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, they messages, they're like, okay, like, how do I start? How do I, how do I heal? How do I, you know, whatever the case may be. I don't think people realize the effects of the community and the city and and the state and you know and the politics and all of that of the state and the place that you live in yeah. i don't think people really realize the effects on not only your nervous system but the collective consciousness and energy as a whole of everybody there you know mm -hmm. and that's why to be honest uh uh christian i i when we when we first started doing awaken my my plan was have them all here in austin have people come to us. You yeah, know? yeah. The, the the problem with that is is that um, you know that's that's not going to one hundred percent work because yeah. you know people want you to go to them. You know, yeah. but the the reason was that we wanted them to feel this energy. It, it, that intentional, right? Like you yeah. you already knew that there was a subliminal just relaxation. It was a, uh, and yeah. that's that's how I felt. I Man, I got into the airport and I was like. This airport is cool. Okay, there's no buzz. I'm telling yeah, you, you man. feel it when you land. <laughs> it's crazy. Right. I was like, right. okay, okay, I, I could, I could spend a little bit more time here. Yeah, man. Right. I got my friends trying to pull. Hey, why don't you move? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. wait a minute. Because everybody's trying to recruit everybody. Everyone's right. trying to recruit it's, everyone. It's the vibe. That's what they're saying. Yeah, they're it like, really community is. and vibe. So, but I'm happy. Listen, you planted that seed. You're like, come to Austin. I was like, yeah. And then all my friends are like, hey, there's an event going on. Too good. Yeah. Here I am. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. So, so talk to me. You're a doctor. Yes. A doctor of what? This is called naturopathic medicine. It is holistically oriented, basically working on the premise that the body has the innate ability to heal itself, That's which is right. not much of a premise. We know that. We know that from an emotional standpoint. We know it from a physical standpoint. And the majority of my work when I wore a white coat and worked in a hospital was in oncology cancer. My mom died when I was in my first year of medical school, breast cancer, metastasized to the brain and the bones and Anyone who's viewing or listening has gone through that cancer journey knows exactly as a caregiver or someone who had cancer what it entails. It is the longest and darkest road that I've seen as a practitioner, uh, both as a caregiver and practitioner. And seeing how painful it is for the person going through it and the caregiver is, is life-changing in itself. The work that I did was to integratively help people go through cancer journeys, right? Mm. So that means, you know, I'm sure you know someone with cancer, lost their hair, nausea, vomiting, pain, numbness and tingling in the hands and feet. Well, guess what? There's things we can do to bring people through that journey in a much healthier place. Now, most of my work was in that. Then I said, well, we're not really doing good with cancer here in America. We're not. We're not. It's not, it's not like we're making big leaps. I'm going to tell you straight up, we are not making big leaps. My professional opinion is because we're looking at cancer the wrong way we absolutely are and and i know you resonate with that and seeing it as the problem yes it is a problem because a cancer can a tumor can grow and impinge on an organ and you can die but we have to look at it as a body's compensation to something deeper whatever it is many things so two of the biggest things that i was looking at that were never talked about were toxins and emotions Okay. okay. You, you are speaking my language. For sure, Matt. This is why we vibe. We don't That's even right. need to say these things. We don't even know. We got the energy, right? That's right. So for me at the time, this was four years ago, I go, okay, well, I'm going to go down a toxins route because there's data out there. I can quantify it. I can say if this, this study will show. And at the time, I had the fear of being chastised for talking to woo-woo from my colleagues. So I went in on a toxins route. Ironically, that's what grew the podcast, grew the social media. People were like, tell me, what, what can I get? I didn't know this is in my home. Mold, toxins in the bed, toxins in the air, air fresheners, BPA, everything. And people were like, whoa, right? I didn't know. The beautiful part was that we began to hold companies accountable of like, are you transparent or are you sort of cutting corners? Because Doc G going to catch it. Yeah. And when I did, companies were literally changing their ingredients based on all of this work. So we had, it was like an activism group for like four years. Wow. It was beautiful. Then I said, I don't feel fully in my potentiality. I know that I'm, I can communicate things and I can be charismatic and beautiful, but there's something more powerful that can shift people's health. And I go, I never looked at that emotional standpoint. So then I started going down the emotional standpoint. It's so funny. Universe listens, right? I said, I'm going to go down this emotional route, figure out what's happening with emotions and cancer. Months later, I'm waking up in my bed 
shaking. My whole body's moving, twisting, turning, breathing on its own, processing on its own. Literally looks like an exorcism of a priest walked in. If a doctor walked in, they'd be like, that's a seizure. Regardless, I was processing some early 90s, late 80s, all this anger, sadness, fear, guilt, shame, repression of all parts of me, even sexuality. It's just like flowing. And five days of that, I woke up every night, like two to four a.m. I, I know. And yeah, yeah. And on the on the last day, it's like just the collective, uh, and I was completely in my purpose. Mm -hmm. It was like you know, you talk about this this uh, when you went to, did ayahuasca and the meditation, how it's cracking you open, and you had your purpose. That was sort of like that before the he the hero put on the capes. Yep. We have our thing. That was the moment, like the dramatic moment, like I'm either gonna die through this exorcism or I'm coming out a new man. And that's when it started happening because then I saw the importance of emotion when it comes to not only the mental, but certainly the physical, which we look downstream in medicine. We got to look upstream, upstream, upstream about where are we in our emotional states? This is the work that you do. Mm -hmm. This is the work that I do. We do it in different ways, but we're bringing people back to their body to let go of the parts of them that are not serving. It's so, it's so funny, man. I'm, I'm sitting here like you're like a mirror of me because it was my mom dying of cancer that caused me to start doing all of this work, you know? And my mom died of lung cancer. Mm. The thing for me was spirituality. It's so crazy. I really believe like we're here on, on a path and like everything that happens like guides us towards that path because I saw my mom um, believe so much in what the church taught her that, that Jesus was gonna come and save her and you know, that that is heartbreaking, bro. It's heartbreaking when you believe it too. Yeah. When you believe it too. And like, n no one came, obviously, right? And I saw her literally wither away. And then, you know, for me, what angered me the most was like, when, when I would go talk to the pastors or, or the, yeah, the pastors or whatever, you know, it, it was, it's like there's, there's these like little taglines that they use because they really don't know what the fuck is going on mm -hmm. spirit, spiritually. Mm -hmm. They, their mind believes something. They're locked into that belief. Anything outside of that is new age or the devil. Right. And so all they know is these taglines, right? It's because it's, it's, it's a trap of the mind and, and people don't really understand that. So the pastor would tell me, well, you know, God works in mysterious ways. Right. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? My mom just died. Right. My mom. My, my mom, yeah. not, not some dude on the street, but like my mom and I saw this happen, right? And then another friend died and that friend had confided in me. Nobody knew he had confided in me that he was sexually abused as a little boy. Guess what kind of cancer he died from? It was in the, yeah. in the, uh, General anal, prostate, the, yeah, cancer. prostate, wow. all of it. Cool. Right. So, so then I'm like, wait a minute. And then by that time, I had already started doing working with the yes. medicine yeah. and I had already started to release. And then I was mad, bro. I went through this phase of being mad. I was mad at, you know, you know, God, who I thought God was because he didn't come save my mom. And, and I was mad at, and I was mad because I didn't know what I know now. And I would have been able to help my mom and I would have been able to help my buddy, yeah. you know? And, and then all of that one day, I went through an episode like that where I got, the same thing happened. I was laying in bed and I was releasing and shaking and everything happened. Yeah. And I saw the vision, bro. I saw the vision clear as day. It was me. I used to have these feathers that I would use over after ceremony. I, I used to have these feathers and I saw, I went like this in the vision. It was like this and it was millions of people. Mm, bro, like as far as you could see that mountain back there, right, right, right. people, people. Yeah. And, and it was so scary to me that I was like, <gasps> No, 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 I, I don't want that. That's, that's big. Too you know? big. Too big, right? Until finally it was at a recent awakening where I saw all these beautiful people laying down and crying and releasing and their, their bodies were shaking. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, all right, let's do this. Right. Because you know, you are that embodiment of that vision. You know, that vision is unfolding because you follow that path, that purpose, right? Yeah, and the beauty is like, we have all these hardships to set us off, right? Because Seemingly, if your mom didn't pass, my mom didn't pass, we wouldn't be. I would not be doing. here right now. Same. I'd be a pediatrician in Pennsylvania somewhere. Yeah. Right. And shout out to pediatricians in Pennsylvania. But right. That like, you know, that your capacity was more. I knew that my capacity was more. But you said something interesting. And it was the cancer that he had in his general anal reason, region. And I always think to myself, is there a energetic imprint of cancer 
And what does it mean? Where? Well, we know, at least I know in my work, that there, in TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, there's a lot of anger in the liver, right? And oftentimes you see that people with liver cancer have that expression of that like redness, that bloatedness, that right? Like you're like, oh, high blood pressure, that, the, the energy of that. And I know how I sound because in medicine, it's completely different. But when I think about the body, I think in simplicity. When I'm with a client, I know what I know from the pathology of like what you're presenting with a disease. But then I shut that off and I go, what is the body telling me? What is the body telling me? Right? I had a client with psoriasis who came in yesterday. And I know about psoriasis because I have a history of it. And I'm talking to her and I, from my experience of what I know, I've connected with it. She didn't tell me anything. I just started expressing, tell me about your relationship with your mom. Tell me if, you're, if you ever had to be out of your siblings, the person who nurtured, who had to grow up fast, who had to take care of the mother. She said, yeah, my mom had a stroke when I was a teenager. Okay. I, we started talking a little about the psoriasis. And the truth is, I find, and this is not just psoriasis, with a lot of diseases, we, there's a set, subset of diseases that are manifesting in the body that expresses, I will take care of the world, everyone in front of me, and leave myself last. The worry starts early on. Now, I found that psoriasis comes from the mother. So it's, I'm going to take care of my mom for A or B reason, whether she had a stroke or whether she was domestically abused by dad, and I have to be the one to show up for that person. Well, ironically, when you think of psoriasis, it is inflammatory in your face, right there on your skin, right there on your knuckles, right there on your elbows. You see it every single day. So I just told her, hey, hey, look, every time you see your psoriasis, I want you to reframe it. Not this is happening to me, but instead go, what do I want, right? What do I want? If you're eating dinner and you're eating food and you're cutting your broccoli and you look at your psoriasis on your forearm, ask yourself, do I want to eat this? Because ironically, it's these people who are so disempowered and not even knowing what they want, how they want to express what they want to eat. If they're authentically in their job, if they want to sing, dance, write more, we lose that so much. And mm -hmm. guess what? The body talks. Her psoriasis is the physical manifestation of a mental disruption years ago, Absolutely. of the emotional repression Absolutely. years ago. So now I ask how many people can we just get into our bodies, have an open communication, know where we hold tension, and then from there, understand what our body's trying to tell us because it's always talking to us. You know this, I know I, this. hundred percent. That's the gift of the connection with the body, opening the space, checking in on the body, feeling your tension, connecting to the tension, asking the body what it needs, man. I did, you talk about ceremony, I did a mushroom ceremony and I had a full combo with my body. My body was contracting when it was a no and expanding with a yes. So it was like I was in front of like a genie that was all knowing. Bro, it, this is where, you know, there's these moments in ceremony where you know, number one, we're taught that the medicine is like evil or new. Right. it's it's to control the mind. Right. But then there's these moments in, in the in, in medicine journeys where you know this and I know this, that like once you allow yourself to go through it, the body talks, your ancestors visit, you see the angels, you connect to the fifth dimension, yeah. you meet really, really, not what someone's told you, but you <laughs> meet God. Yeah. You get to know, you could see your past life. You could see your future. Everything. Just like I was told, I saw my future very clearly. You're going to meet the woman of your dreams. You're going to have a little girl. And that little girl is going to be the healing culmination of your grandmother and your mother. There you go. And it's happened. There you go. And then people want to say things like, oh, but it's the devil or it's new age. Right. No. No, no, you've just been enslaved in your mind to think that so that you never discover the truth of who you really are. That's, ooh, that's powerful. And it's, it's, it's the absolute truth. And we demonize so much. And we can talk of, about of that. Of course right? we, demonize we demonize it. it. Of course, we demonize anything because that's the system, yeah. by the way. And I want to, for our listeners, you know that what we do here is we speak absolute truth. But you have to understand this. Is, is, it's, it's not like we demon. What it actually is, Christian, is... It's the three-dimension matrix system, right? It's the energy of the system that while you're living in it, it feels like, you know, good and bad or whatever. Until you can fully pull yourself right. out of it, then you're able to see it like, 
oh, that's what's happening in the system. Yeah. Oh, no wonder they're getting sick. They're getting sick because no one tells them the truth about A, B, C, and D. And they're getting sick because they're in a relationship where they're miserable, unhappy, and they don't speak their truth. Right. And they don't speak their truth. So then that's why the, you know, the body right here is showing up as this way, right. right? Oh, no wonder they're getting sick because, you know, they're waiting for someone to come and save them. And they go every Sunday to this thing and they just go and they sit up and they stand and they stand and they clap and then they, and they, mm -hmm. but, and they believe in that. They believe, they're taught to believe. And yet they're also taught to believe that anything outside of that is evil. Why? So that they never know the actual truth of who it is that they really are. And that alone gets you sick. Right. right. That alone gets you sick. Right. Not knowing who you are, not living in your truth, not being in your true power, because you believe that someone is going to come save you. And if you do anything outside of that, that that is evil and mm -hmm. you could be a sinner and go to hell, which there is absolutely no such thing as sin. Yeah. It's all control. Yeah. It's yeah. all control. Yeah, we create our own hell, right? Absolutely. We, most of us are living in our own hell. And, and, it, and it's a powerful thing for you to say that. It's a powerful thing for people to move away from that indoctrination of this is the way that it is. Because, dude, I grew up religious. I went to Catholic school, right? I had the Bible right by me, you know? Like, and so much of that, <laughs> it's funny. I'm like, oh, no, I did this one thing. I cursed today. I, I broke a commandment or I sinned today. So much of my life was ruled in fear. And, and because that's what it is. People don't realize it. Exactly. It's the energy of manipulation, guilt, and shame. Exactly. Everything. And let's talk about honorable shame. That's the big one. Okay. So here, here, this is, this is really important because of that. And I call it, listen, if, if you're religious and you're connected to something higher, but accept and love people for who they are and where they are, beautiful. But if your religion is telling you that you can't accept people for who they are, if it's not this way, it's no other way. You should rethink it. Now, can I pause that? Yes. But then they're so entrapped in the religion that they will say in their mind, no, yeah, but I accept people for who they are. Bullshit. Bullshit. Because up until 15 years ago, you couldn't accept gays. Right. And your pastor didn't accept gays. Right. right? And, and now when people are freeing themselves and doing plant medicine, you can't accept plant medicine because that's new age. That's the devil. That's, that's the, the new devil. Right. But you have, your ego has convinced your ego, your ego has convinced you that you are accepting. No, but you're not really accepting. And I'm saying this because I remember right before, like as I was, I was, I was starting to like question everything, like yeah. question the universe, question everything, right? I started to pull away. And I remember uh, the pastor's son at the time says, yeah, well, you know, we, we, the gay thing wasn't cool, but I told my dad, like, dad, you got to lighten up on that because if yeah. not, then like things are changing. And then, and I, you know, back then I was still in it. So I was like, yeah, that's good. But but then in my soul was like, well, what the fuck is it? Is it is it truth or is it yeah. you're just what 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 do you believe? What is this real? Is this and that's when the whole thing just started to uh, like unfold. unfold yeah. and, and when I literally went into a seminary, I was like, show me God. Yeah, the un it's it's the unraveling that's right, right. Of, of that which you thought you knew. Talking about show me God, I did a, a, a beautiful sound here in LA. Shout out David Shemesh and we had a big group of people for my friend's birthday. I was in my house and we had maybe 20 people. And what it is is a mushroom ceremony, but it is the most beautiful sounds. This guy's a master of his craft. You know I, when you I'm see sure, masters? I'm sure. Like, I'm like, how is it raining indoors, but there's no water? It's like, <laughs> oh, right? I'm like, whoa, okay. One girl never even smoked weed in her life, never touched a drug, grew up very religious, right? very indoctrinated this is what it is this is how it is period but i was so shocked that she even came but it was my friend's good friend from childhood and i was talking to her she's like i'm I, i'm just i just felt like i have to do this wow. i was like wow three and a half grams of mushrooms later six hours later she, I, I look at her and she's looking at me and she's like all of my life i've read about what it means to to be around god what god means today i met god everything i believed was not true. Of course. This is exactly what it is. Of course. Because it's one thing to conceptually know versus experientially experience. It's the mind. It's the mind. The mind can be controlled. So if you are every single weekend, by the way, thank you for this. Yes. Because I remember just maybe a year ago, I was too afraid to have this conversation. Yeah. You know, and now I am just at a place in my life where it's like the truth is the truth. Yeah. And people are waking up and they just need to hear the truth. For sure. Know? And so, and so if you are in a place where number one, you need to go anywhere 
outside of well, anywhere, right? And you need to listen to someone else tell you about God. Even if you need to get through God through a book, you have no idea what's right. really going on. Right. That's you true. have no idea. That's true. But like my brother said, you are being, you are a subjugated human being. And what that means, subjugated means is that number one, you're not free. Number two, you are underneath an energy that you don't know exists in your life, mm -hmm. but that you have been taught is the way to life, basically. Yeah, yeah is the way to life. When one thing that keeps sticking out is when you said that experiential fully, this is me, like speaking the truth in relationship, being the you that you are, mm -hmm, basically, mm -hmm. remembering. Um, for me, that's the highest level of health. That is health, right? So for someone who's like doing all these cool biohacks and has all this expensive equipment and eating the great food, but doesn't do that, to me, that's not full health. You ain't healthy until you really embody who you are, which goes back to that piece that I was talking about, shame. I grew up religious and we didn't talk about sex. Not really. I mean, I remember one of my first memories where I saw a naked girl was on uh, one of the movies from the 80s, like a, a ghoulish movie that was called Little Horror Movie. And they had like a sorority fight and the girls were getting topless. And I was like, whoa, what is this? My mom came <laughs> sprinting. I don't even know where she came from. She came sprinting in, jumped in front of the, the TV, covered it up. But granted, look, I was a kid. I get it. But still, there was that level of discomfort around naked bodies, women, sex, sexuality, taboo, intercourse, sex scenes without even nudity. Right. If we're watching a family movie, I contracted, right? And my God, when I went through this work that I'm doing, the emotional healing, and I peel back the layers of my own self, it was first sadness, then it was a ton of anger. And you'll notice, when whatever layer you're in, you're going to attract the people, places, things, situations, circumstances in That's that right. alignment for you to That's feel right. that emotion. That's right. Then it went deeper into this really fear, and then that fear moved, and I was like at the final boss. And it was just this huge mountain protector man of shame. And I was like, shame around. And it was my hips were tight too at the time sexuality and i was like okay no i'm a sexual being i'm a sexual being what does it mean to be a sexual being and this unraveling just happened mm -hmm. where all of a sudden i just took ownership and for maybe i was where most people are but i was holding on to some deep shame around what sex is yeah bro. around around the sin around sex the 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 dirtiness around sex i was like there's no such thing yeah and it's, i read a, it's an illusion i read this book called conversations with god and it says you don't know god until you've had you've prayed in your bedroom and have had sex in your altar in your church altar and mm -hmm. i was like oh shit that's blasphemy because break that down right so you're 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 having sex in the church altar where you pray and you're praying in your bedroom where you have sex until you understand that both are divine right both are a spiritual experience which completely changed my experience around sex yeah. Once that shame moved away, I was like, holy shit. Right. This isn't, we're not talking about just transactional experiences with women. This is something that is, co connects to the heart. This is something that is a spiritual, whoa, like you are powerful. Whoa, I'm a powerful man. Woo, I feel alive. Yeah. The sensuality came out of me. All of a sudden food tasted better. Music sounded better. Brother, you know, it's so great. That's why I started to put it on weight. I started <laughs> to put it on weight because, because I, because I found, I had that. I found Jen, we were in love, and I was just realizing that like, even there was something in my mind that had an issue with like eating food. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I remember we were in Italy and we were just driving with the top down loving life. And I was like in love with life Ooh. and in love with this woman. And I'm just like eating food. And I remember looking at her, I was like, babe, I think I just realized something like food is love. Yes, yes, yeah. it is. Because for me, it's like, what is God? To me, the experience of God is the deepest presence, right? When you're on psychedelics, you can't be anything but presence. It no. forces you into presence right. and then you connect to something. But if you can be fully present with food, you can be fully present with someone, you can be fully present during sex. When you listen to a song, you're feeling the God within all of that because it is. It's just a wave in an ocean, right? right? So we're seeing just that expression of it. And if we connect to that, we see ourselves and it's the most beautiful experience. This is why, like, for me, I was like, does food taste good to me? Yes. Whoa, I think I'm growing. I think I'm connecting to my sensuality of life. God is the most sensual being. God is sexy. God is sensual. And you are that. Because that's what created us. Exactly. I'll tell you something funny. Um, as I started to unravel this, you know, um, I, I recently mentioned this at Awaken. 
And it was a powerful moment where people, where I, I helped people to understand how disconnected we are sexually because of all of the thoughts that go on that I'm, I'm going to save that, come to Awaken, we'll talk about it there. But what I will say this is, you know, I remember there was a moment where I was practicing, um, you know, holding on, you know, the, and, and not uh, ejaculating, right? And I was practicing that. And this moment came where it's like God, you know, love, infinite awareness showed me like how ridiculous that is because I'm keeping myself from the enjoyment of it all. And I remember just letting go. And ever since then, it's like when I experience orgasm, I just laugh uncontrollably. And now that's your thing, L huh? Like a hyena. <laughs> like a fucking hyena. I'm literally. <laughs> I love that. Because it's like, and the way I see it is, is that if I can be honest, what just came to me is that I have unraveled so much of the religion, the shame, the guilt, the this, the that, the that. I'm not laughing because I am controlling the laughter. I'm laughing because my body and my heart and soul are laughing. Yeah. Because yeah. of the joy yeah. Yeah. of feeling, of being here, of being alive. Yeah. And it's like, brother, it's like, you know, People always ask me, like, why do you do what you do? It's because people are not living. Right. And they have no clue. Right. And so that's why I want 30,000 people in a, in, a, in a stadium sold out for, for sure. Awaken, for sure. you for know? Sure. It's not what the small self think is because of money. I can get the fucking money. Yeah. Uh, Casper and I were just, and, and Lauren were just thinking, like, a guy offered us money to come here on the show. And I said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Because money is just a byproduct of what you do. Exactly. But the world lives in so much scarcity, right? That they're trying to like buy followers and buy attention and buy this. We just don't play that game. Right. Because no, we're disconnected from no, the system. No. Yes, you know? exactly. It's about putting to putting in the forefront your talent, your artistry, your gifts, and not coming from desperation, making decisions like That's that. Right. You're right. It's always a byproduct. Because like you said on my show, opening and receiving that heart to be like, I'm taken care of. The gift I'm I'm good. That was probably one of the biggest practices for me is trusting. Mm. Shit, I've done enough ayahuasca where it shook me and it said, you better start trusting. And I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to trust. I don't want it to get darker. No <laughs> yeah. more darker. Please get me out of the Stranger Things underworld. Get me back up here. <laughs> so let go and receive. And it was like, okay, I'm just going to do this. However many people show up, however, however it flows, That's it's right. taken care of. Even if I'm putting it on my credit card and I might be losing money, the next one explodes, it's fine. And we are so scared to just let go and receive that, which we can't see. That's right. right. Absolutely. But the gift is like in seeing that that power like of, of belief can move a whole mountain. You Absolutely. know that, right? It's Absolutely. just like, this is, and you said, you want to share this with everyone? Cause you feel so good. You and, and, and that's, and by, you just want every human being to, to feel, feel the way you, you know do. what it is, bro. It's cause I, I look, look straight up. This is what it is. I don't want you to die. Right. I don't want you to die and, and waiting for, for, for some illusion to come and, save you because guess what that means it means you died waiting and you didn't know who you were yeah it means you died waiting for some thing that someone told you you were supposed to wait for and in all of that time of waiting you never once got an opportunity to discover who it is that you were really yeah. supposed to be and who it is that you really are because in that waiting there's rules you can do this but you can't do this you can do this but you can't do this you can that you are a subjugated human being. Yeah. It's you know what I'm saying? It, yeah, it's interesting. And, 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 I, and I don't want you to die like my friend did. Right. And I don't want you to die like my mom did. And that's what, that's what this whole thing is all about for me, man, is that if human beings can just have the courage, right? And I know this conversation, for me, it's like the, one of the best conversations I've ever had. But if you're out there listening, it could be triggering the living daylights out of you. Right. That is good. Go into that. Go into the trigger. Go into that and ask yourself, why is it triggering me? Yeah. Right? Right. What have What's been coming told? up inside of me? What is it that I'm holding on to? Right? Am I holding on to a belief that if I let go of that belief, what does it make me? Am I afraid of being free? Right. Am I afraid of knowing who it is that I really am? Am I afraid of having it all in life? Yeah. Am I, af am, am I afraid of healing the illness? Of course, of course, man. That's what a, a quote I put in. You can't heal someone that's not wanting to be healed. You can't. If so, if we in our egoic identification have held on to these parts of us, what is the, let's say an illness, right? Let's say this illness gets me the love and attention I always wanted from blank, blank, and blank. Bingo, bingo, fucking bingo. Right? 
So of course you're going to hold on to it because what's going to trump your sickness is that love and attention that you always seek from somebody, most likely mom or dad, and it's expressing in the same way. That's how you heal. There's an emo This is the emotional, mental, emotional component that we don't look at in medicine. Just like you're driven by the religion and the church stuff, I'm driven by look at the state of medicine. This is what we're doing in medicine. We're completely missing the damn point. That's it's the right. same fire energy that's pushing out here. So what are we identified with, right? Because it starts early on, these indoctrinations, what is safe in the household, what is safe in school, our first girlfriend, our first boyfriend, coaches. And then people sit in front of me, they stand in front of you, and they're just this culmination of pieces of them that have been safe and unsafe throughout life. Who are you? Who are you? Because who you are is way more expansive than you ever thought. That's You're right. all the darkness and all the light. You're all the hell and all the heaven, right? And when you can embody that without fear, that's the person that you are. You can be any, you can move a mountain, you can move millions, you can change the world, you can heal an illness. Dude, that is the gift right there, the authentic expression of who you are. And then you get to answer the biggest question of all, who is God? Ooh, Ooh. listen, I've, I've had enough experiences to know that God and I are not separate. It's the ocean and I'm a wave. That's it. And you're a wave. That's right. Right? This, and, and, and by the way, we're the same wave. We're the same wave. Right? Just, just a little, little different. Just a little different, right? Yeah. Right. But we judge other waves. We're like, oh, that, that wave ain't flowing the right way. That one's curling too early right. on. That one's too close to the rocks. That one's all messed up. My God, how, how, what, what a life lived when we judge so much because we're living in so much fear instead of, oh, shit, this guy's me, man. I love this guy. Yeah, man. This guy's the literally mirroring everything within me. And if I'm triggered by this guy, what the hell is happening within me? That's right. Right? That's what right. What is, what is he or she showing me? Because that's the gift. I hope you guys are seeing this. I hope you guys are seeing this alignment and this flow, right? Because it th this is what happens when you allow yourself to let go of all of that judgment. I'm yeah. going to go back to religion. I remembered, you know, I used to have a friend that was a Muslim. And he would tell me about his like Muslim stuff, right? And by the way, I am as opinionated as they come. And when I like know something, I know it, right? right, right Which right. I want to talk to you in a second about vegan, non-vegan. Okay, okay, so okay. I want to talk to you okay. in a second about that, okay? Because I'm going through some stuff with that. And, and I remember making him wrong because he was a Muslim. And this was my friend. And I remember making him wrong. It felt wrong in here, but it's what I was taught up here. Because, you know, of all of the indoctrination and everything that I believed. And I remember after that, like, those were the moments that made me sit and ask myself this question. Wait a minute. I think I'm so right. And I think that my way is the way. It's the way to heaven. It's the only way to heaven. Right? And anything outside of it, forget about it. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to hell. Could it be that he possibly thinks the same thing? Most likely. With the same passion? Most likely. With the same conviction? Then who's right and who's wrong? That's separation. That's separation. Right. Both being sponsored by stories and myths and opinions that aren't yours. Right? Pulling away and leaving, living in the mind without the experiential reality of like, wait a minute, gays aren't that bad, right? Yeah. Like wait a minute, maybe I can eat this or do this or do, wait a minute, sex it. See, maybe all of a sudden- Maybe I can jack off. Right, maybe, maybe you I can't can jack off and you ain't I going can. to hell. Maybe I can't, right. This is, this is what I tell people. Do you expand or do you contract? That's it. Do you feel a green light or a red light when you're around someone, when you're doing something that maybe your religion says, you know, think about it. If you're hurting someone, you're going to contract. You, sh you shouldn't be hurting anyone. Mm -hmm. But my God, if masturbation was disbarred by your whole religious architecture- but you feel good when you masturbate. You feel empowered. You feel like you're not overdoing it. You're doing it consciously. Whatever it is, my God, then why are you not honoring your body? Instead, you're honoring a story that someone else sponsored for you a long time ago that is not your truth. So if you've been listening to my podcast for a while, you'll know that I'm a strong believer and advocate for plant medicine and its ability to awaken and heal the mind, body, and soul. It's a belief that is deeply rooted in my own personal experience with both ayahuasca and psilocybin mushrooms. And many of you for years have always asked me, you know, Danny, where do I go? Where, who can I trust? And there is only one place I would ever recommend or put my name behind, and that is Reunion. 
Reunion is a place where you could set yourself free from whatever is holding you back from living the life of your dreams. It's a beachfront, beautiful property that is in Costa Rica. And what I love about it is that it's not for profit. And this is the only thing that they focus on is the preservation and the safe utilization of these beautiful, wonderful medicines. And I only feel comfortable putting my name behind it because I am personal friends and have journeyed with some of the members of the facilitating team. Guys, I'm honored to have aligned myself with them to create the Higher Self Scholarship Fund. It's a fund whose purpose is in helping people who don't have the means to experience these medicines and yet have the desire to. And every time one of you books a retreat with Reunion, $100 from every booking is going to go into this fund and we will be sharing this money with people on a monthly and bi-monthly basis. So help me help others by using the code Danny Reunion when you go to register to experience your own life transformational journey. To find out more, go to reunionexperience.org and get ready. So this brings me to, a, to, a, to an, a, another thing that I want to talk about. I realized something. Uh, Aaron is training me right now. Yeah. He's changing my life. I didn't realize I didn't know how to walk. I didn't know how to run. I didn't realize that my glutes, my hamstrings, and all this shit down here was like literally turned off, which is why when I would deadlift, I wouldn't be able to work out for three or four days. Right. Because my lower back and my, n nothing was working down here. So he is literally, okay, step one, here's how you walk. Your big toe has to push down and has to like literally drive off and you have to move and your body should be moving as one. Bro, bro it's like going on a journey with my body. Yeah because I'm feeling things that I've never felt before. Cause here I was fucking benching 225, right? right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. But like, but like my, my glutes and my legs and all of these things down here, right? I, was, I would walk like a duck. And I remember one time we were in London and Jen, who's way more conscious, like she made me realize, she said, baby, do you realize that you walk like a duck? <laughs> and I looked down, I was like, motherfucker i walk like a duck Whoa. Yeah, i walk like walk. a duck and then i started doing research on it and i realized that my feet were like this because all of this is like deactivated and too tight and if it's too tight here your feet will go that way and and then i try to like force myself to do it and then until i actually like got down and dirty and like i hired Aaron, and i was like just fix my body yeah and everything is changing for me i'm bringing this up why um people don't know this this is going to be pretty big for me People know that I didn't sleep for about a year, right? And it was because I had a fear of death. And I was afraid to like close my eyes and like rest basically, you know? And um, as a result of that, like longevity was like an obsession of mine, uh. right? So I found this guy online that taught this diet. You fast 23 hours and you, you, you take a drink, and you, you have to be vegan, and you only eat one meal a day. Now, if you look back on Instagram and you look back on my pictures, one year ago, I was ripped. For the first time in my life, I was like dialed in, I had a 24 pack, like I, I looked <laughs> fucking good, right? But when I became really honest with myself, my body was falling apart. Yeah, my body was falling apart. I wasn't able to sleep. I wasn't happy. I didn't feel full. I didn't feel strong, right? And I'm now in a space now where I'm, I'm, I'm back to eating animal, you know, uh, consciously, because I'm starting to realize that like, the most important thing is you feeling good, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just want to talk to you about that, right? I want to talk to you about like vegan, non-vegan, Obviously, there could be a week or two that I go back to being vegan. Right. I just am in, in a place where I no longer want to be categorized as anything right. because I don't want to be trapped into a box of what you can and can't do, right? And I just want to like listen to my body, right? That's powerful uh, because I'm in the same place. A few years ago, I said, okay, I'm tired of just being put in a box with everything. Um, me personally, I stopped eating animal products 2009. Mm -hmm. So I like, and I never craved it again. And I felt pretty good for the first few years. And then I saw that my body was not feeling good, but I did it wrong, right? You have to be, the thing about 
vegan, and I'm a big proponent. I'm a big proponent of respect for animals, the global health. 100%. You and I both know yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. The way we treat animals, factory farming, is unconscionable. It, it is one of the biggest, if I believed in sin, would be the biggest sin. Right. Because it's just a complete disregard for conscious, sentient beings. Now, most people who eat a vegan diet are completely just jumping into it, not knowing how to do it. They're feeling bloated. They're eating those manufactured, oh, you go you get frozen vegan this and getting this be vegan burger here. And your body's going to suffer, right? Because when you're eating shit that is not nutrient dense, it, it's going to rob nutrients from your body. So to do a vegan diet, you have to be aware, do your research, work with a nutritionist, work with a doctor, work with someone who can really lead you to making sure you're getting all of the important nutrients. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to get all the nutrients. You get a good amount of nutrients. There's some that are missing, which brings up the protein thing. A lot of people harp on you don't get enough protein. It's controversial in the sense that there's some studies that say, no, animal protein will be more bioavailable and it's going to build your muscles more. There's other studies that say, well-designed studies that say, both on a vegan diet or meat-eating diet, you get the same, you, your muscles respond the same. Where that lands is where it lands. Pay attention to your body, which brings this back to everything, your body. Mm -hmm. What do you feel when you eat this way? Don't, stop kidding yourself. Get out of your head. Come into your body. If you're in your body, are you contracting or expanding when you have a carnivore meal, when you have an omnivore meal or a vegan meal? For me, I know I, when I ask myself this, I go, I need to eat salmon. And I included salmon in my diet. So maybe three times a month, I'll have a little bit of salmon. I tried to do eggs. Eggs still don't work well with my body. But at this point, I know my truth is I feel pretty robust because I work out a lot. I move a lot. I use a lot of energy when I eat salmon. Mm. But other than that, I feel great with quinoa. Yeah. I feel great with tofu. And until I feel really crappy and depleted, then maybe I'll entertain something else. Yeah. So the whole point, like you said, is don't put yourself in a box. Yeah. Because yeah. it's same indoctrination. This way, no w way. W without knowing it, that as I was saying, I was like, holy shit, you went right back into the same religion box. For the same religion food. box. It's just with food. Exactly. Yeah. You could carnivore, vegan, this keto, this, that, my God. Listen to your body. Now, what I will say, and this is to me undeniable because I experienced it. If you want to, and this is why when you're going to go sit with ceremony, when you're going to go do ayahuasca, mm -hmm. they have you do a vegan diet. It's because it truly does cleanse you energetically and it opens you up spiritually. Yeah. And from what I have learned about my human design, from what I have learned about my, my spiritual connection, half of the reason why I wasn't sleeping, bro, was because I wasn't here on earth. Uh, like I was physically here on earth, but my spirit was like, bouncing around all over Cosmos, the place. Cosmos, yeah, Jupiter. Yeah. yeah, and like what what eating more and, and particularly what it's been doing for the last week, you know, eating some animal product is that it's grounded me more. It's right. like I'm, I'm like, I'm here. Like I, I feel like, yeah. you know. Yeah, there's a robustness to it, right? Versus the air, right? The, the flow of like that energy of plants, right? There, there can be balance with people. What I, what I would say is because I am a big proponent of traditional Chinese medicine, not trained in it at all, but the biggest, and I'm a naturopathic doctor, the biggest changes in my health have been through my traditional Chinese medicine doctor. Mm. And one thing that she brought is bringing the awareness of, you need to stop eating so many cold foods. I'd have smoothies, yes. I'd have smoothie bowls, yes. I'd have salads all day. Ayurveda. Uh, yeah, and it's same same idea, right? So the warming foods, oh my God. Mm -hmm. You talk about grounding, I came back to life. That's right, bro. And, and so ask yourself, like, how, what's the ratio? Are you eating a lot of cold food? Sometimes when I feel hot internally, I'll go to air one and get a nice little smoothie, right? I'll cool myself down. But eating eating the warming foods, the grounding foods, they, they feel nourishing. So yeah, viewers and listeners, ask yourself, are you eating a lot of raw cold foods? Maybe, maybe you may feel better. Listen to your body if you're eating steamed, cooked, broths, warming foods, maybe even in the summer, or maybe in the summer you want more raw, but listen to your body. Listen, so someone with a big head on Instagram saying you need to eat this diet isn't your truth. Right. It's their right. truth it's and their they're truth. fundamentally putting it on you. Listen to your body. What is true for you? Stop listening to me. Stop listening to carnivore MD. Stop listening to vegan MD. Listen to your body. Yeah. And, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to that. It's the same thing with like drinking. 
like when I finally started listening to my body, I started to realize my body does not like ice in water. But like, but like my son, my son craves ice in water. Yeah. We're just different energy. Yeah. And that's okay. Everybody's different. Right. Yeah. Paying, paying close attention to that is, is yeah. essential. Yeah. Ayurveda, TCM, it's all the same. You need to just think about your constitution. And if you go, go see a Chinese medicine doctor, man. I, I, listen, I got I, some good I ones. one million percent agree and endorse that message. Amazing, bro. Yeah. We're on it. Because when someone, my brother, I was in London and my, and, and my brother over there at this wonderful restaurant called The Curled Leaf. He was over there. They, 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 do, they do beautiful vegan food, right? Um, which I, I'm like salivating just thinking about it, yeah. right? But then in the back, he has his Chinese medicine. And he was explaining to me, this is hurting because your toe over here and your pinky nail over here hurt with this over there. And this is, and he's like, ding, ding. and he's putting all the like the, mm -hmm, the, the needles. The, the, the needles in, and then you're like, you feel incredible. Right. Because this is the, one of the only medicines that honor meridian systems or energetic systems. Right. So they'll say, yeah, your right big toe is totally connected to your scrotum. That's right. And you're like, what the fuck is happening? My scrotum? How is that possible? They poke your toe, your scrotum heals, right? Yes, it's like, right. what the hell? You know what I mean? It's, it, that's the beautiful thing because they know how to meridians travel. Right, man. So they're right. And they, I was never really into it enough that like, because I'm like, this isn't physiology. This isn't how the spleen works. But the way they see it, ironically, is really powerful. It's spot on. It's spot on. That's why it's ancient. That's why it's lasted longer than all the other medicines right. and Ayurveda. Right. It's like, they're on to something. Start listening to the OGs because they're right. on to something. That's right. So I want to, I want to end on, on, on this note and I, and I, and I want to ask you this question. Me and you get it. Me and you get that, you know, for the most, yeah, I was saying all illness has to do with either your emotions or the food that, that you eat and the toxins that you are breathing and living in, right? And you, you fix that. You, you fix it all. So if someone is here and they know someone who's suffering from cancer or who is, you know, you know, has diabetes or who has some sort of autoimmune disease, which, which those for sure I know are emotional and, and, and food based. And they're like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to do this. Like I'm ready to start the healing process. What would you say would be like step one, step two, step three, step four? Awesome. Understanding if you are ready, Right. And like, like you said, I, I, I'm ready to heal. I'm not identified with this part of me that needs to be sick anymore. If you're ready to heal, the number one thing I say is you have to begin to establish a relationship with your body. You have to visit your body. The, I, the analogy I give is we choose to live in the mind so much. And that's a rinky dink tent in front of a mansion. It's got a hole and it's got a mouse running through. When in reality, the mansion is there. You open the door, but every time you open the door, you hear it's scary sounds, yelling and crying and, no, I can't go in there. It's haunted. But it's not haunted. There's just parts of you that you haven't allowed yourself to see since you were a child and you've identified that that's not you. So reality is you need to knock on that mansion door every day, try to open it, peek inside, maybe one day take a step because the more you get into your body, the more you have everything you need. Your body will give you, tell you everything. It's the blueprints to your healing. It's the blueprints if you're in the right relationship. It's the blueprints if you're eating the right food. The more you connect, notice where you're holding tension with your eyes closed. Put your hand on the tension. Really meditate under your hand. Be with that tension. Ask your body, what do you need from me right now? What am I holding on to? What am I not letting go? Because that tension is your barometer for your body telling you, hey, pay attention to me. I'm talking to you. Right. When you listen, and this is the important part, you have to honor what the body is asking. When you honor, the intuition and tension gets louder. The intuition gets louder. The tension gets louder. Then all of a sudden, you're beginning to understand, whoa, hold on. This autoimmune disease is way more than my diet. What is my body telling me? I'm fucking angry? At who? My dad. Oh my God, I'm really angry at my dad. What is my body? I need to yell. Maybe you're in the middle of your driveway and you're just having a meltdown. Can you allow that part of you to be seen, the anger? Can you allow and accept that, yes, you are an angry person. You're not just a light. You're not just a be love. You're the darkness too. Can you allow that proportional opening of the darkness so you open more light? So when you move through that anger that's making you sick or that fear or the guilt or the shame or the sexual repression, my God, then you come back to those light parts of you. Oh my God, I'm joy. I'm love. I feel good. Is this how my body's supposed to feel? I feel so grounded. I feel so present. I feel so calm. The truth is, the more you connect with your body, and I'm literally speaking for people's bodies, I'm speaking for the bodies of the world. Connect with your body. It's giving you every try, it's trying to give you every gift of the world if you pay attention. And 
and I want to help you guys a little bit more with that. And I want you yeah. to, to help me with this because when you, uh, let me just say this for a moment, the more conscious you become and the more disconnected from the system that you become, the more that you understand what he is saying. But in my experience, people will literally message us all day long and be like, okay, but how do I connect with my body? Like, what does that mean, right? So for example, for example, like one of the things that like I do is like, let's say for example, you're stretching. Let's say you're in a pigeon pose, for example, right? And all of a sudden you're realizing that you're holding on to pain, right? In your left hip, for example. And what you normally do because you're afraid to feel the pain is you'll back away from the pain. Right. Here's how you connect with your body. Go into it a little bit more. Breathe and breathe into that space. Exactly. Right? What that means is you breathe and you, you focus. Yes, you're breathing physically here, but you're putting your intention that the breath is going here. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you go a little bit lower. And then all of a sudden, if you stay there long enough, an emotion might come up. Exactly. Like, wait a minute, I'm really sad. Right. And then what we normally do is we go, fuck that. I don't want to deal with that. No, 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 no. Right. This is what this is where the healing comes, guys. Go into the sadness. Like, like Dr. G said, what am I sad with? Body, tell me, what am I sad about? Ask your body to tell you. I promise you. This is where you're going to start realizing some trippy shit is going on, which right. is that you are really the healer that you've been waiting for to come and save you your whole time, right? Exactly. All of a sudden, a thought will come up in your head, like a, like an image of something that happened when you were a little boy, a little girl, uh, three weeks ago, whatever. And then you go, oh, shit, I'm sad because of A, B, C. Mm -hmm. I'm still sad because the guy or the girl left me for somebody else, whatever the case may be. And then you go, okay. What do I want to do? Do I have the courage to sit in there and release it? And that's when you start the, maybe you have to yell. Yeah. Maybe you have to cry. Right. Maybe you have to yawn. Maybe you have to get to a point. But what I will tell you is this, when you get past it, all of a sudden, I promise you this, if you were stuck here, you will allow yourself, your body will just go, eh, and you'll go further deeper into the pose. Right. That This is what being in your body means. Right, right. That's yeah. why tension is your barometer. It's showing you exactly what it, your body wants. That's right. Go explore the tension. Go into it, like you said. Feel the pain. Lean into it. I had an experience once, Dr. G, that I'm sure you'll appreciate. I was working with a body healer, and he was like, you know, doing his thing, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, for a while there, and I'm realizing that now it's so trip, but it's, it's all gone, yeah. right? For a while there, like, I used to think it was my abs were sore. I was holding on to pain oh, in my yeah. stomach. Oh, yeah. You want to trip out? Huh. He goes, there's something here. And I go, yeah, my abs are sore. He goes, breathe into it. Breathe into it. He goes, it's time for you to release this. You've been holding on to this for a long time. And I go, yeah, my abs are just sore. Yeah. Like, whatever. This was it. I didn't know how this stuff worked yet. Clear as day, bro. I could see it right now. I'm in the bus in the fourth grade, I look back, the girl that I had a crush on had her hand under the shirt of another boy, right? And she ended up basically picking that boy over right. me. Her hand on his belly caused me shame in my belly, which right. made me think that it was because I was fat or because I was brown and he was white or because all of this shit started unraveling. And I'm there on this bed, like shaking and crying and crying and crying. Psh, done. Never Gone. Again. Gone. That's Gone. beautiful. That's beautiful because your body held that memory. You were open enough. You saw it. And it's, it's, it's incredible that there's like a stored catalog. It's like a movie catalog. We got a blockbuster in our bodies, right? <laughs> and in that moment, you just lean into it. And it's beautiful because it's the exact place, right? Yeah. We noticed, I can tell you, I, I, was, in, I was having this deep, release it was the biggest one that i've had to date and it was right in my body and my body took over so it started its own breath work i already i wasn't even doing it, it was like <laughs> <sighs> and i was like okay and then vision where i see my mom laying on a couch depressed she was sad and for me i was gifted as a young boy with the talent of performance i can sing i would dance i would put on plays i'd do the ninja turtles everything right 
And I knew that anytime my mom was sad, I just perform and she was happy in a kid's simplistic mind. Mm -hmm. This, then this. So I used those talents that I know makes mom happy and I would make her happy. The beautiful thing is this. I came back to this moment and I've seen a lot of healers like past life reg or, um, regression when you're a boy. How old are you? Six, six, six. I always say six. Never knew why I said six. Oh my God. Then I came to this moment where 1990, I was six years old. And my mom's on the couch and she's sitting there and she's depressed. And I, I knew she was so sad for a few days, but I knew on Monday the Ninja Turtles cartoon was going to come in. And I planned the whole morning, because it was the summer, to do the dance. I, I was going to be Michelangelo on this side of the room, Leonardo on this side. I was going to have the fake sword. I had the nunchucks. I had real nunchucks. I was, uh -huh. I was, it was going to be the best performance of a lifetime. And as soon as it came on, I came running out, running out, running out. I go, Mom, Mom, Mom. It's ready. The, the, the performance, come, come, come. And she wouldn't get off the couch because she was so depressed and so down. That moment of helplessness, it showed me exactly. In the, in, as it, I'm seeing the movie where I tightened my stomach and held my stomach in, and then I ran to the bedroom and cried. That was stuck in my belly. And it showed me that moment that I completely forgot about. Yeah, bro. And, and the beautiful part is it showed me that most of my life, most of my life, has been a compensation from that one moment. Is where, that nuts, bro? Where if I can make someone else feel better, then I can finally feel better. Mm -hmm. And this was the crux of my, my whole life. Girlfriends, friends, teachers, family, literally up until this year, all of my life was how can I make other people feel better so I can feel safe enough to feel better myself? And that completely changed. And it was only because I allowed the body to do what it does. Crazy, man. That's the craziest crazy. thing. Crazy, crazy, crazy. You know, if you're out there listening, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is available to you too. Like, yeah. it's just, so number one is connect with the body. Number two? Number two, feeling safe with your body. Number two is your voice. You need to have a voice. You need to be free to use your voice. I always tell my clients, practice in the shower, right? Breathe into the belly. And, uh, right, play, sound. You need to project your voice because if you don't have a voice and you're, uh, right. your emotions are not going to have permission right. to leave, right? right? You need to really come into your power. And here's the irony. You got a voice. It's never, you want to know how, I meet women who go, I go, take a deep breath. And they go, uh, right? and, I, and then I go, okay. I go, let's imagine your kid was on your lap. A robber came in and threatened the life of me, you, and your kid. You'd put the kid aside and be a mama bear. Ah, get out of here. Ah, right? right? So what? In one second, your identity of your voice just disappeared. Right. So once you allow yourself to begin to hear the intensity of what your voice sounds like, whether in a growl ah, or a ah, letting it fill up the house, that is always going to keep that roadway open for your emotions to move. Well, and, and, and that's why so many women like during orgasm, right? they're held, their voice is held in. Right. I made a post one time about this. It's like, you know, for us men, this is what it means to hold space for a woman is to understand what is happening, understand the way that a woman's body is reacting during sex, the way her energy is showing up during sex, the way her voice is showing up or not showing up during sex. And if you see that your woman is afraid to express herself, help her, literally, go. Right. Open right. that jaw. Say, baby, it's okay. Yeah. Let me hear you. Yeah. Let, you're free. Encourage it. Yes, you're free to share. You're free to scream. You're free to yell. You're free to, because that's when you as a man can hold space for your woman. And that's when she will ultimately feel safe enough because you're aware. Mm -hmm. You're aware that you are there to provide that space for her. And then the beautiful thing is she'll do it right back for you. And and this is and the, exactly the reverse. So coming from that shame, coming from the shame of, of sex and sexuality, I always had my voice like this. I don't want no one to hear me, right? Oh, there was oh. no expression really tight, right? Like this, right? Because mm -hmm. it's something that inherently my body didn't want to do because I submitted to a story. So I had this partner who goes, you're not vocal. You need to be more vocal. You need to do this, right? This masculine penetrative energy. Like, why don't you do this? You have intimacy issues. You have libido issues. Wow. What happens to a man's penis? It goes back inward. It goes, <laughs> right? That shit went inward. It was like, you, you, I'm not coming out to <laughs> I'm play. I'm not coming out to play at right? all. Right, right. And, and that was the expression of the intimacy issues. But then I had a partner who was soft, open, 
And I, she didn't tell me anything. When we were intimate, she, uh, she opened it. She, I saw she responded to every sound that I made. She responded favorably. And I go, oh, she likes this. Okay. I feel more like a man. And I can yeah, yeah. connect to that inner Leo lion, right? And right. it's like, psh, ah, psh, ah. And, and that's, it's, it's about, again, that safety of just, yo, you can be you. Yeah, like, bro. I hold that for you. That's right. Man to a woman, but also woman to a man. Like, that's right. we all got our shit. Let's open it up and be like, yo, you be you. You know, that's one of the things is that, you know, um, I, I've been in relationships in the past where I didn't feel safe to be me. Right. And that, listen, and that's no one. I, I always, and by the way, guys, if you guys get anything from what you learn from these shows or Awaken or whatever, it's like, you never blame nothing on anybody else. Yeah. Because it's you, right? That's, it's no one's fault. And it could have just been the experience that you had to go through to come online and be you. And for that, you say thank you. And there's a gift. But... See, that had to move through me. Right. You guys got it? Something that, moved out. Right? So that had to move yeah. through me, right? I had to let go of some things that I know exactly what it is. But I'm bringing that up because that's one of the things that like, I loved about Jen. Is that like with Jen, I was free to be me. And there was no like, what I say or do is going to be wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's going to lead into me getting into trouble. Yeah. And so then when that happened, then I started to feel free. I remember there was, there was this moment where we were we were having sex and, you know, at the end, I just started to get a download and I started to realize that, you know, one of the reasons why my mom did pass away from cancer was she was holding so much grief, lung cancer, never mm -hmm. smoked a day yeah. in her life, right? And then I got a download that it was that she was never held by her mom. Yeah. And bro, I start crying my fucking eyeballs out because like the whole, the whole story, like, the, Made sense, the, yeah. The dots just connected. Yeah, I know that. And one. then I was releasing all of that and she just held me. Right. And I, here was the, here was like, I allowed her to hold me yeah. because I was so rigid and guarded that no one could love me. No one could touch me. No one could really love me. So, you know, no wonder no one before ever had a chance. It was me. I was the one creating it yeah, all. Yeah. You don't blame it on anybody else. And that was one of the things that really made me feel in love with her is that like, I am safe to be me in the fullest capacity. The generational thing. You broke your mom's generational hold, all the traumas that go all the way up to oh, great abuela, all of oh, them, man. And, but that's what, wow. You know? And that was the message of my little girl. Yeah. She's healing, she's healing the entire feminine lineage. Yeah. This little girl. Yeah. Powerful, powerful, man. And this, the safety, and we talk so much about men being able to hold women in safety and be them, but there's so many women that are so deeply wounded and forceful with their energy that don't allow men to be themselves too. They go, I want you to cry, cry. And then they cry and they go, oh, uh, I You're don't know You're such a little bitch. It. You're such a little bitch, right? <laughs> you know, for me, yeah. the most important thing is my artistry. Man, I wear kimonos, I'll paint my nails, I'll dance. I'm, I'm an artist, man. You think a prince, modern day, Minus all the talent to play music. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> that. Just the showing. It's not the music, right? I had this partner that was so triggered when I brought that artist out because of her own wounded self in terms of what it means to be a man, sexuality. So anytime I was an artist, I was gay. Anytime I was the artist, I was gay. Right. And I met this girl after, and I remember dancing with my eyes closed, my hips moving, you know, like that sensual. And I got into her, I opened my eyes, I go, she looking at me? And she was, but very different. Yeah. Not the smile cringe, but the, damn. And she goes like this, you look, you look like a, a man who's just so in touch with that flow. The oh my God, Christian, you look so sexy. I never heard someone call me sexy when I was dancing. Wow. Can you believe how liberating that was? It, that it's, you it's a, allow it's a game me. It's a game changer. You allow me to be all the parts of me. Right. And that woman I, I fell in love with because I was like, yes. Of course. You see me. Of course. You see, not only see me, you fuck celebrate that's right and that's the gift that women can give to men as we give to women you know absolutely. that's the space that we can hold absolutely bro absolutely and then so what's number three so getting in the body voice and i always tell people you got to check in on your belly because if you're not breathing into your belly your awareness is all the way in your head you're bringing all of your awareness to your chest and your chest breathing i tell people take a deep breath the first thing they do is lift up their shoulders and yeah. suck out their chest yeah. right yeah so you have to be grounded into the body first so Find three things that you're going to do. Shower, poop, 
eat, pee, things that you do, drive in your car, and take a moment and go, is my belly relaxed? And relax means not necessarily pushing out, but you just had Thanksgiving and you unbutton the top and you said, there's yeah, my Buddha yeah. belly. Right? And right? be okay with your belly. And be okay with it. Be in love right? with your belly. Right. You ain't at a cocktail party. You're not wearing a tux. She's right. not wearing a cocktail dress. You're not a GQ model. You're not a GQ or, model. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We ain't no GQ models yeah. <laughs> as much as we want to be. My belly is here. Okay. Yeah. And let that belly out because we need to bring ourselves into that grounding parasympathetic. If we're in sympathetic, we're going to be in our mind. We're going to be in our ego. We're going to be up. We need to be from balloon heads to grounded people. We do that by just coming to the belly at least three times a day. And then you start getting used to letting your belly loose. And then the fascia around the belly starts opening up more. Right. And now your belly is looser even more. It's more relaxed and you feel more in home, at home in your body. Okay. I want everybody to take a pause here. By the way, I think this is officially our longest episode ever. Casper, I, I is, that, love, is that true? I love that. This is a world is it, record yeah. for everything. No, no. But, but this is this is... This is, I know I say this all the time, but I, I think this is my favorite episode ever because Bro, I, I just honor. feel, I feel like at home, at home, at home, at home. It's at an home. honor. But I also feel like we're, we're literally changing lives. Yeah. I think if you're still listening and you haven't been triggered so much that you said, ah, it's too much, we're, we're changing. This episode is literally changing lives. Medicine. And, 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 and I want you to realize something. I want you to realize that I've asked him, how do you heal cancer, how do you heal autoimmune, how do you, how do you heal you know, your diseases? I want you to realize that the first three things he mentioned have nothing to do with anything outside of you. Has nothing to do with food, has nothing to do with toxins, has nothing to do with, yet yeah, that's what you've been fed. You've been fed that that's what it's all about. The three things he's mentioned have to do with things inside of you. Mm -hmm. Heal the inside, you will naturally heal the outside, right? Right. Start loving yourself more, you'll naturally eat more nutritious and better quality organic food. Right. This is how this works, right? So then regarding food, what would be the tip? Oh, man. Organic food, like you said. Organic, right. You really want to get high quality food. I, I, you know, there's, they try to throw so much controversy, pesticides, you're fine with this. The reality is no. Too many people don't understand pesticides. And this was, now I can really speak confidently. I speak confident about emotions, but I, this is my old life. Yeah. And when I talk about pesticides, it's like, when we think about, we hear people say the dose makes the poison. Well, that's true for a lot of things, but not necessarily pesticides because we don't take into account a phenomenon called bioaccumulation. The more pesticides you have, the more they bioaccumulate, the ones that are fat soluble. So they stay in your body. Some you pee out, others stay in your body. That's a problem. That's a big problem mm -hmm. because pesticides are not only organic chemicals that you're being exposed to, but they're also heavy metals. That's sticking to your body. Now, we know heavy metals, are, some of them are connected to cancer. Certainly, a lot of pesticides are, but more importantly, they disrupt your microbiome, your mm -hmm. gut microbiome. So you go for organic food. Go for the colors of the rainbow. If you eat meat, do that if it, if it serves you and you know it, where it serves you well. If you're vegan... But you got to get some fruits and vegetables. These are the most powerful foods on earth, man. Mm. They're antioxidant rich. Your body knows how to utilize them to the T. Your body celebrates. Your gut microbiome celebrates when you're having all that fiber. It's gifting you back these constituents that are feeding your brain, feeding your heart, feeding your body. Go for organic quality. The best is if you have a garden. Yeah. Then the food even tastes better. Right. Right. If not, go to a farmer's market, but really, really get in touch with earth food fruits, vegetables, Look, at, ask yourself at the end of the day, did I eat red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet? Did I eat all the colors of the rainbow? No, okay, I haven't eaten green stuff at all. Like, let me get some greens in my diet tomorrow. Just having this loose connection with, you know, these not rigid rules, but these loose rules on eating is going to make a ba major, major difference, major Beautiful. difference. I love that. I love that. How do people hear about you? How do people connect with you? Yeah, the Instagram is uh, doctor, D O C T O R, dot Gonzalez with a Z at the end. The website is docgonzalez.com. The emotional healing website is elm, E L M, dot health, emotional liberation method. Beautiful. I never, I never, I never even told anyone what, what it means. I just said elm. I thought it was cooler with three cool. letters. Cool. And man, we're doing a lot of things. We, I have the online store if you want to get hand curated uh, supplements, home products, baby stuff, cosmetics, shampoo. Wow. The swell score. That's like power. Bro, this is like five years worth of work. We put the best of the best. If you go, I need good B vitamins. Don't go on Amazon because you don't know which ones are good. And takes away the research. This is handpicked by people who are crazy about quality like me. Mm -hmm. 
The swell score. The swell score, man. Oh, I'm going. We're blowing it up, bro. Okay, great. We're blowing, it's like just in the past year, it has blown up and it's like four years of work. I love that, man. Um, and I'm available. Like, you know, like I'm Heal Thyself Podcast is my podcast. You were on it. It's coming out soon. Yeah, that's Right, good. it's coming that's out good. soon. And uh, I'll be at the Awaken event, everybody. I'll be at the Awaken event. You're, gonna, you're coming in July to Palm Springs. I'm coming in July. I'm gonna I'm gonna be wearing wear my Palm Springs flip flops and shorts. I'm gonna look real 1950s Rat Pack. I love that until man. I'm sweating and crying in the middle of the floor. Yeah, that's right. And 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 that's you know, if you could ask if you would ask me, what would I tell somebody to do? This is my answer to everybody. Everybody messages. You know, how do I heal my relationship with my husband? How do I heal my body? How do I start to transform my life? My answer is always come to Awaken. Yeah. Because I honestly, the same way you put your heart and soul into what you do, I put it into that. And if you, I don't give a damn where you are in the world. I don't care what's going on in your schedule. I don't care if you have money problems. As a matter of fact, you have money problems and you have problems with your schedule and you have problems with travel because of the fear living inside of you. It's like that is the, 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 the gift. What you think is the roadblock to get there, it's actually the gift of, that will help you set you free, For quite sure. frankly. For sure. And so that would be my thing. Come to Awaken, guys. Honest to God, because half of the emotional stuff, you're going to liberate and open it up there at that event. And then, uh, and then the rest, you just go on the journey. Yeah, you catch me on a dance floor. I'm going to be right in the middle of it. I've okay. seen those oh, videos. Yeah, it's going to be dope. I, can, I imagine myself just... It's going to be dope. Yeah, right? it's going to be dope, man. Cool, man. Thank, Thank you for being having here. me, bro. Thank yeah, you for having me. It's, it's such a pleasure. And the one yeah. we did is amazing. Go check that out. This one, it's just vibes. For sure. For An sure. honor. I for appreciate sure. you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. That's it. This week's episode of The Higher Self. It was a long one. Um, if you're still here, I want to congratulate you. Seriously. Because it shows you have an open mind. It shows you are willing to grow and to transform your life. It shows that you are, are not living in a box. Or maybe you were living in the box, um, but you are conscious enough and aware of it enough to be able to say, hmm, maybe there's something outside of this box. And I think, you know, because you had that mental paradigm, you were rewarded by this show. I really feel that. So uh, share it, share it with your family members and friends. And uh, we'll see you next week on another episode of The Higher Self. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Higher Self. If you heard something in this week's episode that caused you to think maybe, just maybe, there was a higher potential for your life, maybe there was a potential to earn and receive financial freedom, to attract the relationship of your dreams, or to improve your health, that's what we specialize in. We help wonderful human beings like yourself to unravel all of the limiting thoughts, feelings, and emotions that you've been living through so that you can finally tap into your life's truest potential. If you'd like to talk more about that, we invite you to join us on Instagram or Facebook and email us the word discover more. And when my team sees that, they will reach out to you, send you the details of how we could help you on your pathway to a life of abundance, fulfillment, and creating the absolute life of your dreams. Message us right now, the words discover more now on Instagram or Facebook, and we'll see you soon.